In speaking of the masculine element, I do not wish to be understood to say that all men are hard, selfish, and brutal, for many of the most beautiful spirits in the world has known have been clothed with manhood. But I refer to those characteristics, though often marked in women, that distinguish what is called the stronger sex. For example, the love of equation and conquest, the very pioneers of civilization, when expanded on earth, the sea, the elements, the riches of forces of nature, are powers of destruction when used to the subgate one man to another or to sacrifice nations of ambition. Here, that great compensator of women love is permitted to assert itself as it's naturally would in freedom against oppression, violence, and war. Would hold all these destructive forces in check for women know the cost of life. Better than men does and not with her consent would one drop of blood ever be shed, one life sacrificed in vain. With violence and disturbance in the natural world, we see a consent effort to maintain an equilibrium of forces. Nature, like a loving mother, is ever trying to keep land and sea, mountain and valley, each in its place, to hush the anger winds and waves, balance the extremes of heat and cold, of rain and drought, that peace, harmony, and beauty may reign supreme. There is a striking analogy between matter and mind, and the presents this organization of society warns us that in the detriment of women, we have let loose the element of violence and ruin that she has only has the power to curb. If the civilization of the age calls for an extension of suffrage, Surely a government of most righteous, educated men and women would better represent the whole and protect the interest of all than could the representation of either sex alone.